NASA and SpaceX are world leaders in space travel and exploration. Humans have not left the Earth's orbit since Apollo 17 returned from the moon back in 1972. You see, in theory, the moon is the easiest celestial body to get to. It is accessible and we've been there before with far less technology than we have now. Well, if it's so easy to get to the moon, then why haven't we been there in all these years, you might be asking? The answer is simple. After the success of Apollo 17, lunar travel became less exciting. People started dreaming up ideas of going to Mars and living in space, and poor old moon just became an afterthought. But that doesn't mean that there hasn't been any interest shown in going to the moon since then. NASA has been pushing for going back to space since as early as 2004, when then-President George W. Bush announced the Vision for Space Exploration, an initiative to send humans back to the moon and eventually to land on Mars, NASA's efforts jumped into full gear. Since then, NASA has made several deep space efforts like Constellation 2004-2010, Journey to Mars 2015-2018, and Moon to Mars 2018-present. Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX, is an American aerospace company that was founded in 2002. SpaceX helped usher in the era of commercial spaceflight. SpaceX was formed by genius entrepreneur Elon Musk in the hopes of revolutionizing the aerospace industry and making affordable spaceflight a reality. The company entered the arena with the Falcon 1 rocket to send small satellites into orbit. They have completely remodeled the way we view space travel. SpaceX has made space travel seem viable to the common man. Now imagine what could happen when these two giants of aerospace collaborate for the betterment of society. Well, you don't have to imagine anymore. NASA announced that it has selected SpaceX's Starship to land humans on the moon as part of the agency's Artemis program earlier this year. Through its current Artemis program, NASA envisions sending astronauts to the lunar south pole by 2024 and eventually possibly establishing a permanent presence on the moon. The program was set into motion due to former U.S. President Donald Trump's space policy. Many people believe that the Artemis program is the most ambitious thing NASA has done in decades. Investing in Starship will not only help NASA return to the moon, but will also do something more consequential. SpaceX developed Starship as a Mars ship. By choosing this vessel for the moon mission, NASA is investing in the Starship program itself, providing SpaceX with a cash infusion for the same technology and systems it needs to get to the red planet. This strategy is coming around to be the most effective moon-to-Mars strategy if there ever was one. SpaceX will be building NASA a modified version of the original Starship designed to meet the specific need for a human landing system for the Moon. The Moon Lander Starship will take off from SpaceX's Super Heavy booster with no crew into the lunar orbit, where it will wait for the astronauts to arrive. The working theory for this program is to have the Starship remain out in space and will be used as a ferry over and over again. Okay, so we've made it to the Moon. Now what? This time around, NASA isn't going to treat the moon like just some random stroll around the beach. They must make it count. No more ripping around in a dune buggy, taking pictures, and having a blast. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin's initial Apollo 11 moon landing was more of a political triumph over the Soviet Union than a scientific one. The mission lasted just three days, and little actual scientific work was performed. This time, the space agency will treat the moon for what it truly is, a stepping stone to the future of humanity. NASA wants to establish an Artemis base camp on the surface of the moon. They will keep sending new teams of astronauts to the moon once per year to further develop and expand the project. But what is the point in all this? Why are scientists and engineers putting so much energy into exploring the moon? What exactly is there? Well, a lot of NASA's new mission is based on just doing new experiments, making new discoveries, and studying what goes on in space outside of Earth's atmosphere. Basically, nerd stuff. Okay, so this is where the theories get a little speculative, so take them with a pinch of salt. In the past, we assumed that the moon was just a big dead rock with nothing on it, but we now know that there is a lot of very useful stuff on the moon, so mining for possibly valuable resources on the moon could be a big money industry in the future. That could also explain why everyone from Amazon to Lockheed Martin has their eyes set on lunar travel. Elon Musk has even gone as far as to saying that humanity simply cannot survive one planet for too long. We must start taking a multi-planetary approach if we are going to survive. And if not permanently settling on the moon, then we could at least shift our resource extraction to it. 
There is no denying the fact that the Earth has been sucked dry. If we could find an alternative for mining resources, that would take a great load off the Earth. Helium-3 is extremely rare on Earth, but it is present on the Moon. This element can be used in the energy sector for things like nuclear fusion. Helium-3 could also become the main power source on the Moon. Silicon, iron, aluminum, and titanium are just some of the useful elements present on the Moon. We know for sure that there is water on the Moon. It's frozen solid in the bottom craters that are permanently hidden from the Sun. The existence of this water could be groundbreaking if, with further exploration, more is discovered, and scientists are able to find ways to extract it. An ample supply of lunar water could help support a space station on the Moon, which was previously considered unlikely due to a general understanding that the Moon was drier than the Sahara Desert. And if there's water, that means there is hydrogen and oxygen present on the Moon. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand how important these two elements are to human life. If we can source water and breathable oxygen directly on the Moon, humans living up there start sounding less and less like a pipe dream and more like just a matter of time. NASA also has a plan to start sustaining agriculture on the Moon by using earthworms. Yes, those slimy, disgusting creatures could play a key role in sustaining life on the Moon. Turns out, these little buggers play a huge role in making the soil fertile. A farm at the Lunar North Pole could have 8 hours of sunlight per day during the local summer. According to experts, it is still a very long road ahead before the Moon can be fully colonized. The creation of a lunar colony would be a massive commitment in terms of time, resources, and energy. Even with the development of reusable rockets and other measures, the cost of individual launches and sending payloads to the moon is still a very expensive venture. Then, there's the many natural hazards that come along with living on a body like the moon. These include extremes in temperature, where the sun-facing side experiences highs of 117 degrees Celsius, while the dark side experiences lows of minus 43 degrees Celsius. Most of the lunar surface is also exposed to impacts from meteoroids and micrometeoroids. The Moon also has very low gravity, which also makes it incredibly susceptible to radiation. It is practically a vacuum. This is part of the reason why the Moon goes through such extremes in temperatures and why the surface is completely covered by giant craters. But don't let this discourage you, there is still hope. Scientists are working day and night to eradicate all these challenges. The Moon is the only realistic alternative for sustaining human life as of now. Even before proposals were being made for lunar colonies, the idea of humanity living on the Moon was explored extensively in fiction, with examples going back over a century. In addition, there was considerable speculation as late as the early 20th century that the Moon may be already inhabited by indigenous life forms. That's it for today, folks. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Tap that bell icon to keep up with our latest content. Until next time, bye.